Hey everybody, this is Josh from Hidden Library Leatherworks. In this video, we're going to walk through crafting a leather bracer from start to finish using only very basic leatherworking tools. Let's get to it. This is the second armor leatherworking tutorial in which we're going to use only very basic leatherworking tools to craft a simple bracer from start to finish. If you haven't already seen my video explaining the basic tools, go ahead and hit the link up here or down in the description. Before we get started, we need to think about the process and all of the different steps that are required to make this bracer. So we're gonna start out with the pattern, choosing the pattern that we're gonna use as well as the leather that we're gonna use, transferring that pattern to the leather, cutting out the piece, soaking and wet molding the leather to make it conform to the shape of our arm, cutting straps, if we're gonna be using straps and buckles, uh, punching all the holes, dyeing the leather, and finally, any sort of uh, finishing touches that we might need, like riveting the straps on. So this is the pattern piece that I'm going to be using. Uh, I will have a link to this in the description down below as well, if you'd like to use this. Additionally, on top of that, I will be coming out with a video soon on how to make your own patterns and things that you need to keep in mind when you do that. Now, as we're going through and cutting our armor after we've marked out our pattern piece, um, you may need to take multiple passes with your knife. Um, a sharp blade will definitely help with this. Ultimately, what you want to do if you have to take multiple passes with your knife is make sure that you're keeping your knife perpendicular to the leather at all times. This will give you an even cut. Uh, if, especially if you're taking multiple passes, you can end up uh, changing the angle of the knife blade, which can end up giving you unclean edges. So that's something that's very important to keep in mind. So, a note about choosing leather. Um, You'll note that you'll have many different styles of leather when you look at a leather supply store. Uh, you'll have vegetable tan, chrome tan, latigo, uh, many other styles. I highly, highly recommend going with vegetable tanned leather. Uh, this is really what you're going to want to use for the base of any armor. Other leather types do have their uses, um, but for the structure and the, the main body of your armor, this is what you're going to want to go for. I will have another video coming up soon where we talk about the different types of leather, their pros and cons, and the uses for each of them. Um, but just for now, stick with uh, vegetable tanned leather. If you're making this armor for a combat game such as Belgarth, Dagger, or Amdgard, you will want to make sure to take note of the rules for your specific game. Uh, for example, in Belgarth, Leather armor must be a minimum of 3 16ths of an inch thick, which translates to 12 ounce weight leather. I highly recommend purchasing uh, the 12 to 14 ounce saddle skirting. This is commonly sold, um, relatively inexpensive. Um, you can use things like sole bends, but sole bends tend to be, uh, they come in smaller pieces because they're a bend versus a side. They they tend to be more expensive, they're harder to work because they are much thicker leather, usually on the order of 14 to 15 ounces, uh, and that will ultimately translate to heavier armor. Um, it's going to be harder to cut, harder to shape, uh, <clears throat> so I, I would recommend against sole bends unless you are looking for you know, a, a very particular aesthetic, if you're looking for very thick, bulky armor uh, and are willing to deal with that extra difficulty. So what we have here is a uh, 12 to 13 ounce side of saddle skirting. You can see that I've already uh, cut some, some pieces out of it previously, but uh, when you lay it out, you'll notice that we have, um, there are some blemishes, and this is common, especially in what, what they call economy grade sides, which is typically what we purchase for armor grade. You can see that we have some, uh, some lines here, uh, there are some areas such as up here by the uh, by the belly where there's there's some fat striations. Um, you want to make sure to avoid these. Uh, and depending on the piece that you're using, you may also see some uh, insect bites or brands or things like that. You know, leather is a natural product. Uh, comes from from cows, and these cows live their lives. So you want to make sure to avoid that if you're looking for the highest quality end product possible. Uh, that's not always possible, and sometimes you know you can work those into the piece as well, especially things like brands. Um, those can often add a, a cool element, you know, especially if you're going for some sort of monster armor or, or something along those lines. So keep all of that in mind and just take a look at, uh, at what you have and, and try to find the best positioning for your pattern piece. So in this case, what I am going to do, I'm going to take my pattern piece, and I think right here is actually pretty good. Um, this is a uh, the spine of the leather because this is a side, it's essentially a half of a cow. So this up here is actually going to be the thickest part of the leather. Um, as we taper off down towards the belly, the leather will get thinner and will have a, a higher fat content, so we'll tend to be a little bit floppier than what we get up here. So for a bracer, this is actually probably going to be perfect. So our next step is going to be to take our pen and uh, make sure that we hold down the piece tight and we'll trace around here and then uh, we'll get to cutting it out. Thank you. 
All right, so now that we've got our bracer cut out, the next step is going to be soaking and wet molding. This is going to allow us to shape the piece to our arm, uh, as well as add the contours that we need to make it more comfortable. So what you wanna do is start with uh, some cool or lukewarm water. Uh, this water is room temperature. It's actually been sitting in my shop for a while. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this and just place it in the water, make sure that it's submerged, and we're gonna soak this for just a couple minutes. Um, we don't actually need complete penetration because this is gonna be a, a pretty simple bracer. We're not gonna have any complex contours or uh, in-depth shaping that's going to be required. So we definitely don't need complete penetration of the water into the leather. Um, if you are doing anything that is any more in-depth, um, if you're trying to form complex curves, uh, deep shapes, things like that, you will want to soak it for longer, um, probably at least until the bubbles stop coming out. But for this, just a couple minutes is gonna be okay. Once our leather is soaked for a minute or two, we're gonna take it out and dry it off. I just use paper towels for this, but you can use whatever's handy. Once we've dried the leather off and it's no longer dripping wet, uh, we're gonna need to go ahead and start to shape this leather. So for something like a bracer, it's pretty simple. You know, we just want to make it into a tube shape to fit over our arm. There are a few tips that you can do to make it a little bit more comfortable. Notably, I like to flare out around the wrist. Um, and by doing that, it's gonna make it a little bit more comfortable. It's not going to rub on your wrist as you're wearing it. And it's gonna be a little bit more comfortable. So to do that, you just need to simply flare up the end just like this. And we'll make this a little bit cleaner. You'll notice that uh, the soaked leather is very pliable. And the trick here is to get it into the shape that we want and then set it and let it dry. And as it dries, the fibers within the leather will harden and ultimately retain their shape as long as it doesn't get too wet. So as you can see, I've flared out the end. If you look at that, you can see it flares out a little bit. Now this is gonna, like I said, make it a little bit more comfortable to wear. And this is the basic shape. Um, we can actually place this on our arm and test it out. This is a pretty simple piece, so there's not much complex shaping involved, and we know it's gonna fit pretty well. You may have to keep working the leather. Um, it does take a little bit of coaxing to get into place. So this is something that uh, you just kind of have to work at it. If you've got uh, anything like a Sharpie or uh, perhaps a, uh, an edge burnisher is, is typically what I use, but we'll go into that later. Uh, that can help to sort of force the leather into place um, as you, as you kind of work it. So now that we've got our leather shaped, what we need to do is just set it aside and let it dry. There are a couple tips that you can do to keep it, to hold its shape while it dries. Often what I will do is take some uh, tape and simply wrap its sticky side out around over itself and that will allow it to maintain its shape. However, I do want to caution you that if you're using a lighter dye, especially like lighter browns or greens or things like that, you can often run into issues where the dye will not take evenly on the leather because of the fact that it dried differently under the tape. So that is something to keep in mind. If you're using black dye or if you're painting it, uh, you shouldn't run into any issues, but something to keep in mind, maybe experiment with a little bit. So here's the bracer all formed up. Like I said, I've used the duct tape here to basically just hold it roughly in its shape. As I've mentioned a couple times, a bracer is a pretty simple piece, so there's not a lot of complexity involved here, and you can get pretty close to uh, a very perfect fit with only minimal shaping. So we'll go ahead and set this aside. This is something that depending on how long you've soaked it, it will take some time to dry, so keep that in mind. The same leather that we use for our bracer is not going to be appropriate for our straps. Armor grade leather, uh, in my case, 12 to 13 ounce saddle skirting, is gonna be too thick for straps. Uh, they're gonna be too difficult to work, too difficult to put on and off, and may even be too thick for our buckles. Um, you can certainly skive this down with a specialized tool called a skiver, but since we're only focusing on basic leather working tools, we're gonna use something that I actually use quite a bit even to this day in my leather working, and that would be uh, Latigo. So Latigo is a, a, a combination tanned leather that is going to be a little bit more pliable than your typical vegetable tanned leather, but is also going to be pretty accessible and uh, basically perfect for straps. This is often what they use for saddle making and things like that. So you can actually uh, pick up these bags of remnants at things like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Tandy Leather, you know, wherever, wherever you're able to buy leather working materials. And they're gonna be very inexpensive. You'll see that uh, you get a lot of remnants, but these are basically perfect for straps. 
So the buckles that I'm using are three quarter inch utility buckles. So we need to cut our straps to be three quarters of an inch wide, maybe a little bit less just to account for the tolerances within the buckle. You wanna make sure that you have a nice square edge to start off of so that your straps are even. In this case, I don't, so I'm gonna go ahead and square this off. Now that we've got it squared off, all we need to do is just mark out our straps at three quarter inch intervals. So because we are gonna have two buckles on each bracer, for a single bracer, you're going to need four straps. There will be uh, the strap piece on the inside, as well as the piece that holds the buckle on on the outside. Now a note about the length of the straps. I would typically go with at least five inches. You may end up with some excess, but that will be beneficial. You can certainly always trim it off later. So once you have your strap cut out, we're gonna measure the strap and we're gonna go in and mark out the holes for the buckle. We're gonna start at the end and we're gonna measure in one inch and that's gonna be the place of our first hole. Try to mark in the center. And then we're gonna mark every three quarters of an inch and we're gonna do three total holes. The idea behind the three holes is to give the wearer some flexibility in the size of the bracer. So ideally, the perfect fit would be the middle hole, but by having a hole on either side, three quarters of an inch spaced from that, the bracer can be expanded or contracted as necessary. Finally, we need to set up a hole at the very end for our rivet. So go in just about a half an inch from the opposite end and mark that. Now that we have our holes in place, we need to go ahead and punch the holes. So take your hole punch and your mallet. In this case, I'm just using the rubber mallet and make sure that your punch is centered on the strap and go ahead and just give it a couple hammers. If you'd like, you can also take your knife to the very end of the strap and give it a decorative look like you'd find on a belt. Uh, there are specialized punches for this, uh, so that is an option as well if that's something that you would like to consider. One trick that you can do to make things a little bit easier on yourself, once you have the first holes punched out in your first strap, lay it on top of your other straps and use those holes to mark out where you're gonna punch next. Now that we have the two strap sides of the straps cut out, we need to focus on the buckle end. So much like what we did before, we're gonna cut out two strips, uh, about four to five inches in length, uh, three quarters of an inch wide. Once you have the buckle end of your straps cut out, you're gonna wanna take and fold over the edge. And from here, you'll figure out a good size for how big you need them to be. In my case, I want them to be about an inch and a half long on either side. So we're gonna trim them down to about three inches total. And once again, you'll want to use the first strap that you cut to measure against the second so that you get an even cut across both. Now that we have both of our buckle straps done, uh, these are gonna be a little bit simpler. So we simply go ahead and fold them in half and find the middle point and we'll just mark it with our punch. Go ahead and punch that hole out. And from here, once again, we'll measure about half an inch in for the rivet. And then a little tip to make sure that your rivet holes line up, rather than punching half an inch in from either side, fold it over and then use that to mark where your second hole should be. Now that we've got the first one, once again, we'll go ahead and use that to mark the second. Now that we've got our buckle straps cut out, we can take the buckles and place them inside. One thing to note, uh, especially if you're using these utility buckles, is that there is a particular orientation. So there is a, a, a right and a wrong side. So make sure that you pay attention to that. Um, I can say from experience that it's not fun to have to drill out rivets because you riveted a buckle on upside down. All right, so now two wardrobe changes later, we're ready to finish our bracer. As you can see, I've already pulled it out uh, and have taken off the duct tape that I used to hold it together. And if you look close here, you can see that there is a little bit of discoloration. This is from that duct tape, like I mentioned. Uh, it does change the drying process. So this may show up as we apply our dye. So that is something to keep in mind if you are using a dye that is lighter in color. Our first step here is going to be to take our buckles and straps and get these positioned and mark out the holes to punch. So you will need to decide on the orientation for your straps. 
Personally, I'm making this bracer for the right arm, and I like to place the buckles on the outside. So you can eyeball this. Uh, if you'd like it to be a little bit neater, you can certainly go ahead and measure it, but I typically will uh, just eyeball it and make sure that everything looks symmetrical. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my marker and make some markings for the punch holes. So you may find it a little bit easier if you start with just one of the straps first. So I'm gonna start with the frontmost, and I'm going to use the strap side first. Now that we have that hole punched out, we can take our rivet and use that to hold the strap in place while we mark our next hole. So with that rivet holding the strap in place, go ahead and move and pull it tight and mark off your second hole. And just like before, go ahead and punch out the second hole. Now with that second hole punched out, we can actually put in the second rivet and start to mock up and see what the bracer will look like. And there we have the mock-up of the first strap. So with this in mind, we can now place the second strap and get a good idea of the symmetry. So once again, we'll start with the strap side and mark that hole. And just like before, we'll use our rivet to hold the strap side as we mark out our second hole for the second strap. And once we have that marked, we'll go ahead and punch out our final hole. Before we move on to riveting the straps, we're gonna need to apply dye to the leather. So you'll note that I've put an apron on uh, and I have a pair of latex gloves here. I highly recommend that you use these. Leather dye is one of those things that once it gets on, it's never coming out. So I'm gonna be using uh, Phoebe's Pro Oil Dye in a dark brown for this particular bracer. Uh, this isn't required, but I find it much easier if you take one of these small plastic Solo cups and pour a little bit of dye into that. It'll make it a little bit easier, a little less wasteful. If you do have any excess, you can certainly pour it back in when you're done. And once we have that, we simply take the foam brush and start to apply the dye. Now, if you are using the Phoebing's Pro Oil dye, this will be less of a concern. Um, but if you're using the normal spirit-based dye, you can often run into issues with streaking. So one way to combat that is to use small circles as you move over the piece and try to get even coverage. Now, depending on the leather itself and the dye that you are using, this may take multiple coats. So just keep going. Um, leather dry dyes pretty quickly, so you can just keep an eye on it until you start to get a color that you're happy with. And you essentially just want to move back and forth over the piece. Go back over yourself where you've, where the areas have started to dry and apply a second coat there if you need to. There, I think that's looking pretty good. One thing to note is that the edges themselves will need some special attention. So we've applied it to the bulk of the armor, but the edges are still uncovered. So. Go ahead and uh, just apply an even coat. And this is something that we're not doing for this particular piece, but if you are planning on doing any edge burnishing, uh, you will want to apply any dye before you do that because the burnishing process will essentially seal up the pores of the leather and dye will not take to the edges. All right, so I think we're pretty good on the dye here. So we're gonna set that aside for just a minute or two to dry. It won't take very long. and go ahead and clean up this uh, excess dye here. Now, once your dye is dry, um, you will want to take some paper towels and kind of rub it across the surface. This will pick up any of the dye's pigment that is left sitting on the surface and give you a kind of a, a little sheen to the leather. There, as you can see on the paper towel, we actually had a little bit of the dye pigment come off. So that's good. It means it won't be rubbing off on our skin later. All right, now the final step to finish up our bracer is just to rivet the straps on. So we'll go ahead and take them as we laid them out and mark the holes earlier and thread the rivet through. Place that down on our anvil and grab one of the burrs. Then go ahead and take your rivet setter and hammer and set the burr down onto the rivet. We'll go ahead and repeat that process for the remaining straps.
One note I do want to make again is that you'll need to pay attention to the orientation of your buckles as you're doing this. This is your last chance to make sure that you get it right. So go ahead and make sure that, uh, that the correct end of the buckle and that the tongue has the correct orientation. So here's something that does happen from time to time. You'll note that this particular bird did not actually fully set down onto the shank. Uh, this is not uncommon, and in this case, really, typically all you need to do is just take a pair of pliers and pull it off, and grab a new burr, and set that down. Now with all the burrs set, we can proceed with clipping off the excess shank and peening them down with our hammer. It's important to try to get as close as possible to the burr when you clip off the excess shank. It's going to make your job peening much easier. Now with this, the objective is to simply take that sharp edge that we have from cutting off the excess shank and peen it over into a dome using the hammer. Now that we have all those strap rivets done, our basic bracer is finished. Let me know in the comments down below if you use this video to make a piece of armor. Share a link to some pictures, I'd love to take a look. Also, if you have any questions about leatherworking or armor construction, feel free to leave a comment and I'll help out if I can. Thank you so much for watching, and if you'd like to stay tuned for more leatherworking tutorials, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks.